Hey guys, uh, so this is Miss Martinez, your science teacher, and I am here showing you what you are going to be using for the dissection, and I've got a frog right here that I'm going to bust out in a few minutes and dissect and show you um, basically all the steps uh, that you will be doing um, within the coming days uh, in order to dissect. So let me go over our equipment first. So right here we have our dissecting pan. And so it's a, a metal pan. These are really nice dissecting pans. It's got a rubber latex bottom that can be removed and washed. And it needs to dry completely. Otherwise, uh, fungus and yucky stuff will start to grow. Um, so we have to be really careful with that. And then um, I also have gloves okay, um, that you will uh, get as well. And then uh, you're also going to have an apron and goggles, which are not pictured here, um, and scissors, of course. So we're not going to be using a scalpel uh, because we don't need to. Scissors are, are good enough for us. So these are going to be used to cut open our frog. Um, we also have forceps, which are fancy tweezers. These are good to use, you know, when you're trying to be really precise, uh, you know, picking something up. Sometimes stuff can be slippery while you're using your gloves, and so it's a little better to use your forceps. And I have dissecting pins, and I stuck them in this sponge for easy transport. Um, and so th this is what a dissecting pin looks like. It looks like a, a capital T and we stick this into the frog to hold it in place. So I have quite a few of those. And then I have a, a probe um, and I use this. You won't have this in your dissecting kit, but I use it because it helps me point at things whenever um, I need to or be a little bit more precise than just my finger. Um, and I'll walk around class uh, when we do dissect and point at stuff here or help you identify things with uh, this probe. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves and I'm going to set up our frog. Here is our frog. Um, so this is a grass frog and you'll notice that it's got blue and red. So it is a double injected frog. You can kind of already see um, the muscle under here and stuff. Um, but uh, depending on what we purchase for that year, you might have a single injected frog where it's just gonna have red uh, for the arteries um, and it won't have the blue for the veins like this one does. Um, so it just it just depends on what we've purchased um, that year. So I wanna point out a few things um, about your frog that you're gonna notice from the outside. Remember that we talked about how frogs are amphibians. Um, so they have uh, webbed feet. So you can see their, their webbed toes right here. Um, and then they also have really strong leg muscles that help them hop around. And um, they've also got skin that they're able to um, basically breathe through. They can um, absorb oxygen through their skin because uh, they live on land and on water, right? So they're able to do uh, both of those things. And so those are some of their adaptations. Other things that I want to point out on the frog is parts of the head or the outside of the head. So you can see the nostrils here, the nares, um, and then you can see their eyes as well. And then right here, I'm gonna use my probe, You right here you can see what's called the tympanic membrane, and that's basically the frog's ears. So um, vibrations will hit the temp tympanic membrane uh, so that they can hear things. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut open the mouth of the frog or basically cut the jaw so that we can get a better look at the inside of the mouth. So I'm going to stick my fingers in here and it's kind of hard to get it separated. So you have to cut the jaw bone so it's going to feel a little tough to cut, but then once you got one of the sides, it's gonna be easier to get into the other one and cut right there. So you can uh, hear that it's a little tough to cut through, but then now I am able to open up the mouth right there. And so some really obvious things at first, right, is uh, the tongue. So this is the tongue. So remember we talked about how it's attached at the front of the mouth, unlike ours that's attached at the back, and it flips out like this. It doesn't look like a very big tongue, but um, it does get, you know, it is stretchy when when uh, 
their little froggy is alive. And then we have the underside of the head here. And so you can see right away, these are the eye orbits. There's one and then there's another one right there. So that's the, the underside of the eye. And then this is what I was talking about with uh, the teeth. The, the, we have the maxillary teeth right here. And then we have the vomarine teeth right there. And so you'll be able to feel those um, when you open up your um, frog. And uh, those are going to be for gripping, right? Because they don't chew their food. And so when you um, open up the stomach later on, you'll be able to see um, that the, you know, if it has anything in there, that the bugs are going to actually be whole because they have not chewed on them. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut the tongue. And I'm going to be really careful with my gloves because I do not want to cut through my gloves. Okay, so keep your fingers away. And I'm just doing like a little snip snip right there to cut the tongue out. And I do not have an organ sheet. I did not remember to bring that with me. Um, but you will have an organ sheet so that you can put the tongue on there. And so once I've done that, I've looked at the inside of the mouth and everything. I looked at the outside. Um, I looked at the feet and everything. I am already ready to start pinning my frog down. So that's what I'm going to do first. When you are sticking your um, dissecting pins in to your frog, it's best to go diagonal instead of straight up and down because um, it'll just hold your frog a little bit better. So I'm going to try to do that. And sometimes you have to be a little mean and break your little guy's arms so that they kind of... Yeah, I just did that. I just broke the, the little guy's arm. I don't know if you heard that. Um, but it's going to help it lay a little bit easier and stick it in there diagonally. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with his legs so I can get those held down. I'm going to go through some muscle right here and then the next one. And so that's going to hold my frog down pretty good. Okay. Then uh, I mentioned that you have this incision that's already been made here. So that's going to help me out a lot. Let me adjust my glove. And um, all I have to do is I just have to stick my scissors into that incision and I have to keep going. And so I want to go up high. Uh, I don't have to go all the way to his chin. But I do kind of want to go up a little ways. And sometimes there are um, some... It's a little tough to kind of get the skin a little separated so just be patient remember we're not being too careful but we're also not being kind of crazy so I'm gonna go down like about as far as his legs are and then I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that eye that I talked about I talked about that capital I so I'm going across here Again, be careful with your gloves. Don't cut your gloves or poke your gloves. And I kinda, I think that's good enough. That's high enough for the top. Okay. And I'm gonna start cutting across. Notice how I went up um, above his arms and I can pull back the skin now. And I can already see some of the muscle is kind of attaching to the skin right here. So I'm kind of separating that out and then I'm going to cut this way. It's a little difficult not being able to move the tray because of the camera. But I'm going to continue going this way. There we go. Okay. So here I'm kind of having to pull the skin back a little and now I've got that door and I can already see some organs coming through um, and I can see muscle here. So these are some organs that are sticking out of the muscle, but this is like that six pack that I was talking about. You can see it kind of right there. So I'm going to take the skin and to make my life a little easier, I'm going to kind of tug on it. I may even want to cut it a little right here, like snip snip it 
to kind of make it a little looser. We're cutting those fibers. And I'm making that door that we talked about. So if you um, don't cut across enough, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have less space to work in. And what you want is you want two really wide open doors here so that you kind of get the skin and the muscle all out of the way and you're able to access the abdomen here. So let me snip, snip this a little bit more right here and kind of tug on it so that I can pull it back right there. Okay, then um, notice how easy that was to cut through, right? Um, it wasn't, I wasn't having to push hard like I did with the jaw and that's how it should feel. That's how you know you're only cutting through um, the skin. And so here you can see the muscle and how that's a little bit thicker than the um, than the skin was. And so that's gonna be a little tougher to cut through. And this is the area right here that you wanna be really careful about because you don't want to break your frog's heart and hopefully I don't do that. So this little area right here is a little bit tougher to cut through. And then the bottom is a lot easier. So I'm gonna move his little intestines out of the way. Those are getting in my way a little bit. You know what, I'm gonna cut up from here to make my eye. Notice I'm just going through the muscle right there. Oh my goodness. I can see the organs already, that's super exciting. So here I'm gonna go across again, just cutting through muscle. There we go, that was pretty easy. And then I'm gonna kind of cut up a little bit more here and go across here. Boom, there's my muscle being cut back. And I'm kind of pulling on it a little bit to loosen it. I'm gonna pull up my pin that I used for the skin right here and I'm going to hold the muscle and the skin layer down at the same time. Now doing the same thing on the other side Going across here, being careful not to get any organs in there. Okay, here we go. Pulling on it a little bit, kind of yanking. And I've got some blood vessels that are hanging on there. So snipping those a little bit, pulling across, and I'm gonna use my pin here to hold this open. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take up this arm one, and I'm gonna hold this down too, along with the arm. So there, that's gonna make my life a lot easier. So here is the inside of our frog, exciting. So let's point out some of the structures that we see inside here. The most obvious one is going to be the liver. And I'm not gonna cut out uh, the pieces here because I want you to see where they're at and uh, what you're gonna be looking for. Now yours is not gonna be as blue as this um, when you dissect because um, if, if we have only a single injected uh, frog, yours is gonna look a lot more pink. Um, and so let me just point out some of the things that you can see right off the bat here. Here is our froggy's heart, okay? So this is the heart right here. Right next to the heart, we have the lungs. So here's one lung. And then remember I said you might have to dig for the second one. Here is our second lung, okay? Then I also have the digestive system. So I'm gonna get try to get the liver out of the way. Actually, maybe I can find the gallbladder. Oh, here is the gallbladder right there. There's our gallbladder. It looks like a tiny 
little deflated balloon in between our liver. Okay, that's this is the gallbladder right there. Now, the digestive system, I'm gonna use my scissors to hold this back because I think my fingers kind of block your view. So here I've got the stomach. So it starts off with the esophagus here and turns into the stomach. And then I have my small intestines here. These are my small intestines, okay? And that will lead, oh, here's my spleen. So the spleen looks like a little stone. And then it goes into the large intestine right here. This looks like, yep, that is my large intestine right there. And then way back here, you can see the kidney. This is a kidney right here. I'm gonna try to show you the other side. I'm not sure you can see this, but there is another kidney right here. Let me move my fingers out of the way. Here's the, the kidney. Um, I don't think you can see that because of the angle of the camera, but there it is. Um, I believe this might be the bladder. I could be wrong about that. I am sorry. I'm not very good at identifying the bladder. It looks like kind of like a filmy sack the bladder does, and I believe that is the bladder. And then here we have fat bodies, I believe, that are attached to what must be testes, okay? What I might end up doing is I might take some of this stuff out just so I can try to identify it a little bit better, but I definitely think that this is a male because I do not see oviducts anywhere. So I think those are fat bodies that are uh, attached to the testes, although I'm having a little trouble finding the actual testes in here. Sorry, I am not an expert. But these look like fat bodies attached to testes. And then way back here, you can see the spine. When you take all of your organs out, you'll be able to feel back here and you'll actually feel the actual spine. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take out the parts um, so that I can show you a little bit better what each part looks like. So this is pretty much the entire digestive system. So I've got the esophagus that's leading into the stomach and then um, the small intestine right here. All of this is small intestine. Notice how you have lots of blood vessels. Um, so yours are gonna be mostly red or pink if you're a single injected frog. Um, but you've got lots of blood vessels here because the small intestine is the part that absorbs all the nutrients. So this is gonna be taking the nutrients all to the rest of the body. And then we have the large intestine here that will eventually lead to the rectum um, and then go out the cloaca. And then I also have here this uh, spleen. So the spleen looks kind of like a little pebble while the gallbladder looks like a deflated balloon, the spleen looks like a little pebble and it looks you know, kind of solid unlike the, the empty, um, what looks like an empty balloon on, um, on the liver, which is the gallbladder. Um, so here I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna open up the stomach, which you will do if you have um, enough time. And so I'm going to kind of cut this off just to make my life a little easier and separate out the stomach. Um, also in here, you will f find, it's kind of a little hard to identify, but I believe that this is 
the pancreas right here. Okay, it looks like a little stringy structure. So I'm gonna separate the stomach. So for the stomach, what I do, what I think is easiest is to stick my scissors into the stomach and then cut it open so it's kind of like a book. I'm really hoping there's something in here. We shall see. Some of your stomachs will be really big and full of things and others will not. So if we open up the stomach, kind of stretch it out a little bit, you will see wrinkles on the inside and it looks like there's nothing in our stomach today, but you might hopefully find something in yours. But what I do want you to notice, something that's really cool, is you'll see wrinkles on the inside of the stomach, and those are called rugae. So remember, we talked about this when we did the digestive system. You eat your huge Thanksgiving dinner, and then you're like, wow, I'm so full, and then somebody says there's dessert. Well, this is how your stomach makes room for it. It's got these wrinkles on the inside that help it stretch out called rugae. So you'll see those when you um, open up the stomach. Hopefully your stomach will be full of things unlike mine. So now that I've got all of that out of the way, I've got some more things here that I can show you. So here are the kidneys. Notice how they're at the very, very back. Um, and so they're the last one of the last organs that I'm gonna see because they um, aren't way at the back. Um, and then I also have my testes here, and let me see. Yep, I believe these are testes right here. This is one testy, and then this is my other testy. So this is definitely a male. Um, you will see vestigial oviducts. Vestigial means that they um, aren't used, they're leftover. So you may have heard of like some frogs that can change from male to female. So I don't believe that grass frogs will do that, but they have these vestigial oviducts that um, don't really work. So vestigial is kind of like your um, uh, appendix or your wisdom teeth that are not really necessary anymore, but they're kind of like a an evolutionary leftover right here. And so um, that's basically what you have here with your, your frog. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut these out so that you can see them a little bit closer and show them to you. And so what I've taken out here are the kidneys and some fat bodies. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, separate these kidneys so that you can see them by themselves. So that's your frog right here. I hope you and Slomo enjoyed the dissection, and I will see you guys in class. Thanks for watching.